Helton, sixth time here on the ballot, and he gets in to the Hall of Fame. A little FT breaking news, Scotty Braun, Ken Rosenthal, and A.J. Pruszynski. A.J., what did you think of Todd Helton? And I will say Colorado in general, because it still has that kind of smoke rising above it where it's like, I don't know, you're playing in Coors Field, your numbers get inflated. So Helton was a great case because of obviously spending his entire career there. Uh, listen, I'm happy for Todd Helton. Uh, and, and to get into the Hall of Fame after many years of waiting. Maybe we can finally, after Larry Walker and now Todd Helton, we can dispel the course field myth that Ken and all these other writers have because he his numbers <laughs> say, hey, this guy should be a Hall of Famer. Uh, he hit on the road. He hit at home. Of course, his numbers are going to be inflated at course field. Everybody's would be. But listen, five-time All-Star, silver sluggers, batting titles. You know, you hit 316, you, you slug, and you have the OPS of what you have. 17 seasons, all with one team, by the way. That stuff matters. So, listen, Todd Helton should have been in a few years ago. Not a first ballot guy, but he should have been in, and I'm happy for Todd that he's getting in after a long wait. Ken and all of the other writers who snubbed these guys actually elected both of Larry Walker and Todd Helton <laughs> to the Hall of Fame. Amazing how this happens. I came around on both those guys. I did not vote for them initially. And over the years, we've learned more about the core's effect. And not that it just boosts players offensively, which it does, but also it makes it more challenging on the road for them to hit breaking balls because they move differently. And it makes things more challenging physically because it takes a toll playing at altitude. There's no question about that. So Todd Helton for his durability at altitude, for that alone, it's an amazing accomplishment what he did. And then you look at his road OPS, people talk about, oh, what was, he, what was he doing on the road? Well, he had a higher road OPS than Eddie Murray, than Dave Winfield, than a number of other Hall of Famers. So the writers over the years have come to realize that Coors is kind of a double-edged sword. And it works for players, it works against players, and I'm with AJ on one point. These guys deserve to be Hall of Famers. And AJ, you know I love OPS+. Plus. That, that is park-adjusted for him. So during his 10-year peak, 1998 to 2007, he was at 144. Like, we, we get it. You're at Coors, and especially back then, right? And just for many years, everyone's like, oh, it's Coors, it's different. But no, wait, there is a stat that at least helps to tell the story to adjust for that because it knows that everyone goes there and can thrive and the games generally are going to be higher scoring. And so that all factors in, and yet still you look at him and you're like, he was worlds above most of the rest of the competition for a long period of time. Well, his career OPS plus is 133. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that's what, 33% better than the average player? So listen, T Todd Helton should have been in a few years ago. Again, I don't think he's a first ballot guy, but he could hit at home. He could hit on the road. And every time he played the Rockies when he was there, you looked at one guy and you're like, all right, we're not letting Todd Helton beat us. And he still found a way to do it. So he, to me, he was a Hall of Famer. As a former player, you look at guys and you say, okay, this guy is better than the rest of the league. So this guy deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. You, you look at Adrian Beltre, you're like, okay, this guy is better. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I looked at Todd Helton and said, okay, this guy is better than everybody that, not everybody, but most guys that we play against. He's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. And to me, the eye test helps. And Todd Helton passed the eye test for Hall of Famer. Also, mm -hmm. too, we should talk about his defense. This guy won three gold gloves. He was an elite defender at first base. And that matters. Matters whether you're playing at Coors or whether you're playing on the road. That comes to the park every day. That's the old baseball cliche. Defense comes to the park every day. So, yeah, it probably took a little bit too long. I get that, AJ. And I, that's a fair criticism of our voting process. But, again, over the years, it has become more apparent, really, the drain that Coors takes on players. And I mentioned that earlier, but I want to mention it again because it's such a huge factor. When you go on the road there, you are physically tired because you are coming off a homestand where you were playing every day at altitude. You're sometimes tired at home, playing every day at altitude. You look at this guy's games played, it was really impressive. So Todd Helton, yes, very deserving and absolutely a great choice. And, and on top of that, I'll just add, Ken, how difficult it is and it's been for the Rockies to field competitive ball clubs and especially any consistency with that. I mean, I'm generalizing a little bit here, but they had more success during the Todd Helton era than they've had since, right? You had that just little dash of uh, playoff taste there when Nolan Arenado was there. But otherwise, I mean, obviously they make their only World Series appearance during his time there. And he probably has hogged up like a good chunk of 
of Rockies franchise years in general. But point being, it has not been easy to even put a winning product on the field, let alone have anyone with consistent success like he was able to put together and stay on the field, which could also take a toll on your health. Absolutely right, Scott. And that challenge that you speak of with the team also speaks to his greatness because it's interesting. Some players are on great teams. Some Hall of Famers are on great teams. And to some degree, I want AJ to chime in on this. I wouldn't say it's easier to play for a winning team, but there's no problem getting up for it every day. Colorado, they weren't always in it. 2007 was a tremendous, crazy run. Helton was a huge part of that, of course. But there were other years where I'm sure the motivation was not the same, or at least the energy was not the same. And to some extent, you have to kind of weigh that in, too, because it's, in my view, a little bit more difficult for those guys to do what they do. You're right. You're 100% right. It's much easier when you're on a winning team and a team that has a chance to go to the playoffs to show up every day. But Todd Helton showed up whether they were in it, out of it, wherever they were. He showed up, he put his glove on, he went out to first, he grabbed his bat, he took his at-bat, and all he did was hit. I mean, there's a five-year span there. We had OPSs over 1,000. So winning or losing, and these weren't in their glory years, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2004, they weren't very good. So for him to go out there and do that every day, play you know, 130, 115, 130, 135 games is a testament to him and how well he could focus and how great of a player he truly was. Yeah, and I liked your point. This is the guy you circle in the lineup. Like, hey, let's avoid him. Let's walk him, right? Let's not give him too many pitches. I mean, he was that guy for a long time. Congratulations to Todd Helton. Sixth crack at it, and he's in. He is a Hall of Famer. For more baseball in general, authentic baseball content, we've got you. Foul territory, 1 to 3 Eastern if you want to catch us live weekdays. And also Ken's Fair territory every single week on YouTube or wherever you get your pods. Congrats again to Todd Helton and to the Rockies franchise.